How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I am back for another comic book video. And this time, we're going to go to infinity and beyond. Okay, that was cheesy. Okay, before I get started with this video, I want to give a spoiler alert. I will be covering some things from Avengers Infinity War, the movie. If you haven't seen it yet, then you need to pause the video right here, go to the theater and see it. Then you can come back here and finish the video. I'll give you a second to go ahead and pause it. Alright, that's long enough. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going over the Infinity Stones of where they appear in the comic books and where they appear in the movies and how they appear. All six have been revealed, so it's a good time to compare them all. I'm not going to go over the powers of the gem or the Infinity Gauntlet. I've actually done that video. It's one of my earliest ones, so you can go watch that one if you want to see what they are, in fact, capable of. I do a pretty good breakdown of all the gems and their powers. This one is just going to be the side-by-side -side comparison. Where they are in the movies to the comic books, the colors, the um, how they are found. And the ultimate motivation for Thanos collecting the gems for the movie versus the comics. And, in fact, tell you about his first collection, or his first time he collected the gems. It was not just the prelude to the Infinity Gauntlet. He actually collected them one time before. And we'll go over that too. So, let's start this comparison with the first two gems that would appear in the comic books. That would be the Soul Gem and the Mind Gem. The first gem we're going to cover was ironically the last gem to come up in the movies. It is the Soul Gem. The, full, the Soul Gem first appeared in Marvel Premiere number 1 in 1972 and first appeared in Avengers The Infinity War in 2018. The Soul Gem in the comics is green, in the movie it is orange, and on the planet Vormir. And to acquire the Soul Stone, you needed to sacrifice, I guess in the life of someone close to you? Um, there wasn't a prerequisite for that in the comic books. The next uh, gem we're covering is the Mind Gem. It first appeared in Captain Marvel number 41 in 1975. It's an almost, if you blink, you'd miss it moment. I actually had to review this comic several times because I missed it the first time. It also appeared in Avengers to, in 2012 and if you didn't know it was actually in the scepter um, the mind gem is blue in the comics versus yellow in the movie as I said it was in the scepter that was given to Loki apparently by Thanos the next four gems the continuity is a little off on this apparently Two of the gems appeared in an issue of Marvel Team-Up before they officially appeared in an Avengers Annual, which that throws off the continuity because the Avengers Annual comes out two months before the Marvel Team-Up. Yet, what happened in the Marvel Team-Up happens before what goes on in the Avengers Annual. So you would need the Marvel team up to fill in some of the blanks for the Avengers Annual even though the Annual comes out before the Marvel team up. <sighs> they both come out in the same year. They're only a couple of months apart. So it's, possibly, it's possible that the storylines were written and when they were released was different from when they were supposed to have happened. Anyways, let's go over the next two gems from the Marvel team-up, which I actually happen to own that one. And that would be on my list here, the Power Gem and 
the time gem. The next two gems we are going to cover is the power and time gem. They both appeared for the first time in Marvel Team Up number 55 in 1977. The power gem would appear for the first time in Guardians of the Galaxy in 2014. The power gem is red in the comics versus purple in the movie. And in the movie, it was contained inside of the orb. The Time Gem first appeared in Doctor Strange 2016. It is orange in the comic versus green in the movies, and it was contained inside the Eye of Agamondo, which not really thrilled about that because it basically just took away one of the most powerful amulets that there is, but maybe they didn't want it to be a deus ex. Now, the next two gems appearing on this compare would be the Space Gem and possibly the most powerful or most frightening gem, depending on how you look at it, the Reality Gem. Not only is it the first two appearance for these two gems, it's the first time that all six gems were shown together and is also in this comic the first time that they show Thanos on the hunt for all six of the gems. Um, and I will tell you about these two and what his motivation was for the first time, he was trying to collect the gems. The next two we are going to cover is the Space Gem and the Reality Gem. They both appeared in Avengers Annual number 7 in 1977, and this would actually be the first time that all the gems would be seen together. The Face Gem first appeared in a post credit scene for Thor in 2011, but didn't get used until Captain America in 2011. The Space Gem is purple in the comics versus blue in the movies, and it is the Tesseract. Now, the Reality Gem, which is probably the most powerful or the even the most scary because of what it can do. It appeared in Thor The Dark World in 2013. The gem is yellow in the comics versus red in the movies and it is the Aether. In this comic this would be the first time that Thanos was gathering all of the Infinity Gems together to use them he got all the gems except for the soul gem because he was afraid to try and take it from Adam Warlock, afraid that Warlock would steal his soul. But he was able to siphon off the power of the soul stone and put all the power into a soul egg. He was going to use this to ignite all the stars in the universe and kill everybody and everything. He had fallen out of favor with Mistress Death and wanted to gain her attention again. So he thought that destroying all the life in the universe would be a great gift to her. The Avengers, with the help of Captain Marvel and Adam Warlock, were able to stop him and destroy the egg. But, like I said, this is the first time that he would try and get all the souls uh, gems as they were called at that time together now the last thing that I'm going to do for this list is I'm going to go over Thanos' quest it was a two part mini series where he was on the hunt for at what was still called at the time the soul gems which he would later refer to them as the infinity gems because there is a soul gem, so just calling them all soul gems just get rather confusing. Um, before I cover this, if you're enjoying this video so far, 
go ahead and give that like button a click. Um, it helps with the ego. So, let's go over Thanos' quest and his motivation for getting the Infinity Gauntlet in this. And we'll also compare his motivation for getting the Infinity Gauntlet in the movies. Thanos' quest would be the second time that he tried to bring all the gems together. Mistress Death had brought him back to life after he had died, and she wanted him to destroy half of the life in all of the universe because there was more people alive than had ever been dead, and this is what her task to him was. He asked for her assistance in acquiring what they were still calling the Soul Gems because acquiring them once before he knew how powerful they all could be. Now, in collecting these, he said that he was going to start calling them the Infinity Gems since each gem had contained their own power and he already knew that there was a soul gem, so he would start calling them the Infinity Gems. In the first issue, he would get the soul gem from the in-betweener, the power gem from the elder, the champion, and the time gem from the, the elder, the gardener. In the next issue, he would get the space gem from the elder, the runner, the Reality Gem from the Elder Collector, and the Mind Gem from the Elder the Grandmaster. Um, he was able to get them so easily because no one knew how to tap into their power, but he did. And after he acquires all six gems and puts them together, they have a cool little six pages here where they show Thanos' face and how the power can be perceived in his mind now that he acquires the gem, the gems, and they have one for each one of the faces. And they also give a brief description of the gems. And after he acquired the gems, Mistress Death said that she was so far below his station that she didn't even want to communicate with him anymore because he was pretty much a demigod at this point. Now everything he does next is still all into win favor with Mistress Death. He follows through with eliminating half of the population of the universe which he had originally neglected and then when that doesn't work he takes on all the celestial beings of the universe like Lord Chaos, Master Order, Sir Hate, and Madam Love, and defeats all of them, and then takes on the enigmatic being known as Eternity, fights Eternity, wins against him, and becomes the new Eternity, still all in trying to impress Mistress Death. But we all know how he ends up losing that power. See my people who have possessed the Infinity Gauntlet list to see how that one ultimately turned out. In the movie, Thanos eliminates half the universe not to impress Mistress Death, but ultimately to balance out the universe. And we'll have to wait till the next movie to see how this will ultimately be undone. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this gave you a little history lesson of where we began to where we are now, comic books and MCU. If you do have a chance, go ahead and give that other video a look so you can see the breakdown of all the gems and what they are fully capable of. Um... I hope you like this. I hope you subscribe and see all the things that I do here. Until then, I'll be seeing you.